early childhood mental health policy practice perspective and direct service perspective within COVID-19 service environment uh, and the service provision challenges track today. We are looking forward to a great session with you all. A few logistic notes as we begin. Um, the session is being recorded and the chat is being archived. Uh, attendees are in view only mode to keep things orderly. You cannot use your microphone. We encourage you to use the chat box throughout the session to engage with the group. Um, you can post here for any technical issues you experience as well as any questions you would like to share with presenters. Um, and we will share these questions toward the end of the session. This session uses audio uh, auto captioning. Um, while these captions will not be exact, we hope they can improve accessibility for all attendees. To act activate these as a viewer, please look for an option uh, on your toolbar that says live transcript and either select subtitles or full transcript, which will appear in a sidebar. Your options may differ if you are on a mobile device. If you're intending to claim professional development credit through SC Endeavors for Early Educators for attending this, uh, you're going to go ahead and complete the submission form that I'm about to share in the chat box before the end of, this, of the session. Uh, this is essential to having the information needed to process your credits. Remember that you must attend the session for its full one hour duration to receive credit. And with that, I am pleased to introduce our presenters for this session. Um, we have with us today, Dr. Mary Ellen Warren, uh, Associate Professor of Clinical Psychiatry at the University of South Carolina School of Medicine, as well as Susan Callahan, um, Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Program Manager at the South Carolina Infant Mental Health Association. So I'll uh, hand it over to you all now. Thank you, Alexis, and thanks for having us. We are thrilled to be here today to talk about um, South Carolina Infant Mental Health Association, our endorsement, as well as all of our schema programming. I'm gonna go ahead and share screen now. So I am the Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Program Manager. My work mainly focuses on building capacity for the endorsement for culturally sensitive relationship focused practice, promoting infant and early childhood mental health, as well as the reflective supervision program that we have recently launched. Um, Schema has had tremendous growth since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, we hired our first paid staff in March and then have grown to I think we have 13 staff members um, since then. And so all of the programming that we are, talk, are gonna talk about today has recently been launched and is in the early stages of development. <clears throat> Woven into the fabric of all of our work at Schema, including our policy work, our professional development efforts, and our awareness raising efforts are some common threads. One of those is a commitment for our work to actively disrupt racism and bias. Another related common thread that runs through our work is the value for the well-being of the professionals who do the emotional work of supporting the babies and families that we serve. And of course, there's lots of parallels in these aspects of the work. We know that the well-being of the babies is tied to the well-being of their families, and the quality of services and support the families and babies receive is tied to the well-being of our infant mental health professionals. We know that racism and bias and issues of equity and inclusion absolutely influence the well-being of the infant mental health professionals, of the families, and of the children. So we're committed to figuring out how we can very intentionally attend to these issues. Notice that I said we're committed to figuring it out. We haven't got it figured out yet, but there's actions that we're taking as an organization within our staff and our team, anti-racist efforts embedded into our program models, but we know that there is more and we don't know what we don't know. So a large part of the commitment to being anti-racist is about gathering as much information as possible from as many different sources as possible. Another core value of the infant mental health work is the central role in partnerships to promoting the social and emotional health of young children and their families. It takes a village is more than a cliche for us in the infant mental health world, and everyone has a role in supporting, the infant, uh, supporting infant mental health. It's relevant across all public serving sectors. So those of you specifically focused, focused on services for young children and families like childcare, home visiting, early intervention, pediatricians, child welfare workers, and those who serve the broader community, law enforcement, attorneys, 
parks, libraries, museums, etc. So today, as Mary Ellen and I are talking about these initiatives, I invite you to look for reflections in your own work and how your programs and initiatives may line up with ours so that we can work together to leverage our efforts to widen the net of services that are available for our South Carolina children and families. The first thing I'm going to talk about today is the endorsement. So I, did, I already told you the very long name, the endorsement for culturally sensitive relationship focused practice promoting infant and early childhood and mental health. For the sake of this presentation, I'm referring it to it as endorsement from here on out. Um, my work is primarily focused on capacity building for endorsement and Jean Shimino is our endorsement coordinator who you see on this slide. She's physically located in Colorado, but is works to support our South Carolina endorsement applicants by being their um, hands-on one-on-one guide through the endorsement journey. This presentation that I'm gonna to touch on today is just a brief, very brief overview of endorsement. We do have monthly opportunities to learn more about endorsement that are all held via Zoom. So I invite you to check out the dates for those on our Skimma website. Um, and we do have some recorded options up there as well. So let's talk a little bit about what the endorsement is. Skimma was created in 2017 to bring the endorsement to South Carolina, a large group of uh, stakeholders got together and formed a state committee that then brought the endorsement to South Carolina and launched the infant mental health endorsement in 2017. In 2019, we then launched the early childhood mental health endorsement as well. Endorsement is an internationally recognized credential. So Schema is part of 33 organizations that hold the license for um, the infant and early childhood mental health endorsement. People who have earned endorsement demonstrate a completion of specialized education, work, in-service training, and reflective supervision and consultation experiences that lead to a competency in the promotion and or practice of infant and early childhood mental health. The intention of endorsement is to transform the ways in which professionals view, wonder about, understand, consider, and respond to the pregnant women, infants, young children, and families whom they serve. The credential supports professionals who offer knowledgeable and skilled support to this population. It can also enhance the professional's ability to identify risks to the physical, emotional, and relational health of infants and young children and to respond appropriately. The process of endorsement and the ongoing training that is required to keep your endorsement help professionals develop the capacity to shift their perspective, address their personal biases, and to slow down, observe, and listen. It also invites professionals to experience feeling heard, validated, and affirmed within the context of a reflective supervision consultation relationship, which Mary Ellen is going to talk about later in this presentation. Endor like I said, endorsement is internationally recognized. It's an evidence-informed system of infant and early childhood mental health standards that promote professional development pathways for all infant, child, and family workforce sectors. So endorsement is open to any South Carolina professional interested in demonstrating their expertise in the infant and early childhood mental health field. So there is an endorsement category no matter what your role is in serving the infants and babies in our state. <clears throat> An applicant's scope of work and the age of the children they primarily serve determine which category of endorsement um, is appropriate for you. So you'll see here on the slide that the four categories um, of endorsement are listed first and underneath the endorsement category is listed. So if you serve children primarily ages zero to three, you will apply under the infant mental health category. And if you serve children primarily ages three to six, you will apply to the early childhood mental health category. The next question I always get is what if I serve ages zero to six? You can apply for both endorsements and earn both endorsements. You just have to do them at separate times. <clears throat> the four scopes of work again are promotion, prevention, treatment, and leadership. So depending on um, which category you fall into, you would do a varying amount of work uh, of, around the competencies in this area. So these categories are the same for the infant and early childhood endorsement categories. There's no hierarchy to these. So it's not as if you start at promotion and work up to leadership. You're, again, your scope of work is where you enter and then the competencies line up with the work that you are doing. It should be noted that the leadership category, the mental health mentor category is further specified by three separate subcategories. So clinical work, research faculty work and policy work. <clears throat> 
You'll see here a screenshot of the competency guidelines for the endorsement. You can access the full PDF of this on our SCIMA website, and you'll see in the blue box the eight areas of expertise. So the competency guideline, guidelines provide the framework for identifying the knowledge, skills, and reflective practice approaches that is important for all workforce sectors that serve very young children. And like I said, depending on your scope of work, you will do a, dip, a varying in-depth work in these eight areas of expertise. So if you kind of think about it as a flow chart, the areas of expertise at the top and then underneath there will be competencies related to your scope of practice and your years of experience and your training and your education underneath these. So you would do varying in-depth work. The next question I usually get is why is endorsement important? Why would I want to earn this credential? We know that the infant and early childhood workforce is comprised of professionals from various disciplines. And we know that some of those have their own sets of standards and some do not. And ongoing training with standards is important for us to promote consistent and positive practices with young children and their families, no matter what discipline you are. Endorsement provides information about the skills and knowledge that a person incorporates into their profession. And so a person who has earned endorsement can easily speak to their skills and expertise by referencing back to those competency guidelines and those competencies that they have achieved. Endorsement provides a framework that tells the parents and the guardians and the other partners that you're working with what good child and family centered practices look like. And we know that aligned professional standards in the field are important and are more likely to produce a workforce that is prepared and consistent in their practice. In our state, this has been a universal need identified by most of the infant and early childhood workforce stakeholders. The first step to becoming endorsed is to become a SCIMA member. So in addition to being eligible to apply for endorsement, SCIMA members receive access to SCIMA's third Thursday webinar, which is a monthly professional development offering, happens at lunchtime on the third Thursday of every month. We bring in a professional to speak on a topic relevant to infant and early childhood mental health. And shameless plug, if you're listening to this and you have information that you would like to share with our SCIMA membership, please reach out to me. We would love to have you um, come share your information with our with our membership. You also receive access to our monthly study group. So the study group of professional development offering is assigned beforehand. It's always a free and accessible online professional development offering. You would engage in that, participate in that beforehand, and then meet with our group, and we would facilitate a discussion around the reflection of our own work and our own experiences and how that relates back to this professional development offering. We are also um, a part of a pre professional development collaborative with the Colorado Association for Infant Mental Health, and so SCIMA members are allowed to attend their bi-monthly book club at no additional charge. SCIMA members also receive um, discounted rates at SCIMA-sponsored trainings and our conferences as well. You also become a part of a statewide professional network, and we invite you to advocate and network to promote your programs, policies, and services that support the well-being of infants and young children and families. You're also kept in the loop with our monthly newsletter and regular social media posts that highlight really content rich items of relevance to infant and early childhood mental health and the work that's going on locally and nationally as well as internationally. After you join SCIMA, you'll follow the steps on this slide to apply for endorsement, but there are a few notes I wanna make here. Each category requires the documentation of at least 30 training hours, and these hours must be training pertaining to the social emotional development and or the practice of infant mental health. You will also be required to submit three professional development reference ratings. You will also, you will be required to document your own competencies in the training and education sections, as well as sign a code of ethics and an endorsement agreement. If you're applying under the mental health specialist or mental health mentor categories, you will be required to take an exam. And um, three, three out of the four categories require reflective supervision and consultation as well. There are fees associated with endorsement and they help cover the operation cost of the endorsement. Specifically, they recover the use of an online application system, individualized support from our endorsement coordinator, who was Jean, that I showed you on the first slide, access to an advisor to support you with finalizing your application. Then your application will go to two to three peer reviewers. And if your category requires an exam, you will get a resource study guide, a proctored exam, and two to three peer reviews upon that exam. So you'll see here that these associated with each category. 
Um, through a grant from the Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation, we are able to reimburse the endorsement fees for the next 25 South Carolina professionals who earn endorsements. So you would pay your endorsement fee up front. Once you earn endorsement, that those fees that I just showed on that chart will be reimbursed. And if you register for endorsement and earn endorsement within six months, an additional $15 will be reimbursed to you. The next SCIMA program I'm going to talk about is our Safe Babies Court program. Awarded, um, we were awarded a grant through zero to three through HRSA to create the Safe Baby Court sites in South Carolina. Currently, the program is working on capacity building and in the very um, early stages of starting action um, for Safe Babies Courts. You'll see Chavis Gash here, who is our statewide um, Safe Baby Court coordinator. The Safe Baby Court team approach transforms the child welfare system into the practice of child well-being by using the science of early childhood development to meet the urgent needs of infants and toddlers. The model brings together child welfare professionals, the court system, children's advocacy professionals, and other community agencies to operate a team to support the families with a focus on advancing health and well-being. The program seeks to increase awareness among those who work with maltreated infants and toddlers about the negative impact of abuse and neglect on very young children and their families. It also seeks to make changes in the local system of care to improve outcomes and prevent future court involvement in the lives of very young children. It seeks to create an environment of change that author, uh, alters the trajectory for infants and toddlers in foster care and helps provide families a team that will embrace them and give them a targeted and timely service. Currently, we have three sites being implemented in South Carolina, Lawrence, Richland, and Spartanburg County. The Child Advocacy Network, uh, Network Centers in Lawrence and Spartanburg counties are implementing the Safe Baby Court Program, and it is implemented through the Department of Mental Health in Richland County. At each site, there is a site leadership team made up of local representatives and stakeholders to help support the program. And there's also a state leadership team that oversees the entire program at the state level. Who are the Safe Baby Court team partners? Really everyone. So I mentioned the site leadership teams, the state level leadership team, but we really look to everybody involved in the lives of infants and young children to be a Safe Babies Court team partner. So community leaders, child welfare, attorneys, judges, guardian ad litem, consultants, local transportation representatives, pediatricians, therapists, early interventions, really all of you can be a partner in this program. The Pair Network Partners for Early Attuned Relationships is our new Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Consultation Network led by Mackenzie Soniak. <clears throat> Infant and Early Childhood Mental Health Consultation is a prevention-based approach that pairs a mental health consultant with the adults who work with infants and young children, in this case, zero to five, in the different settings where they learn and grow, such as childcare, preschool, home visiting, early intervention, and even in their own home. It's intended to build the consultee's capacity to support the babies, toddlers, and preschool aged children. It is a relationship-based approach. We know that positive relationships between the consultant as well as the consultees are central to the successful consultation, but that requires building trust, making connection, and interaction over time. So the relationships between the consultants and families, as well as the other consultees, will always model empathy, warmth, and positive interactions that we hope that will then affect how the consultees interact with others, either in their program or in the homes that they're serving. The process requires mutual respect, sensitivity to culture and context, and ongoing communication. There's also a capacity building aspect to infant and early childhood mental health consultation. So efforts to improve the infrastructure reach and scalability of programs to address the social and emotional needs of young children and their families, and to improve and increase the ability of early childhood educators, program staff, and community partners to effectively address these needs um, is a key feature of infant and early childhood mental health consultation. So it may look different. Well, it's going to look different for every consultee. The implementation, the duration, and the frequency of the consultation activities will look different, but the goal is always the same. And the goal is not to create a system that is dependent upon the consultant, but to ultimately increase the competence and confidence of the confidence of the providers and the programs to integrate these mental health perspectives into their work. 
Consultation is collaborative. So the early childhood providers, the families, as well as the consultants are full, participation, full participants in all aspects of the planning, um, implementation, and evaluation of the services. Everyone will bring their own values, perspectives, and expertise to this relationship. And the consultants will often set aside their own agendas to meet the unique individual needs of that consultee and that program. Consultation is individualized. So consultation services evolve from and reflect an understanding of the unique needs, strengths, and values of the child, the family, the staff, and the early childhood program. Individualizing consultation will require each consultant engage in information gathering, skilled observation, and co collaborative planning with each consultee before creating the service plan. Consultation is also culturally and linguistically responsive. So the consultant works to understand how culture, language, and community impact all aspects of caregiving and child rearing, including values, beliefs, and practices. And through a dynamic process, again, reflective supervision and consultation, the consultants will examine and continuously reflect on their own culture, values, and context as they seek to gain insight and understanding about those that they're serving. A hallmark of infant and early childhood mental health consultation is keeping the baby in mind. And although it may seem apparent in the name, consultation really aims to bring the child's presence to every session. Even when not physically present, the child, or in the case of a early childhood program, the group of children are the organizing focus of the consultant's interactions with other adults. So ultimately, the consultant is attempting to create attempting to create what is called reflective functioning, which refers to the awareness that an individual's behavior is a reflection of underlying, likely unobservable, changing, dynamic intentions and emotions. <clears throat> we naturally try to understand each other in terms of mental states in order to make sense of and anticipate each other's actions. So ultimately increasing uh, the adult's reflective functioning, it will make it possible for them to accurately read a child's intentions and feelings so that they respond in a sensitive manner. Who are our schema mental health consultants? They all have a master's degree in social work psychology or related field, and preferably they are going to be able to be licensed in our state as well. They have at least three years experience um, working as a mental health professional before they become a mental, uh, infant and early childhood mental health consultant. They possess the attributes and skills critical to this work, such as a consultative stance, cultural sensitivity, and empathy. And our consultants really have a specialized knowledge and deep understanding of social, emotional, and relational health. This is our program model here. You'll see Schema as the lead agency. And as the lead agency, there are a few things that we provide. So we're providing oversight and guidance to support the full network, um, no matter where you lie in this network. We also employ the state direct director, who was McKenzie that I showed previously on the slide, and the intake coordinator, which is a Leia on our team. We have the consultation database and then share service data with our local partners. We house and triage the infant and early childhood mental health consultation intake warm line. And McKenzie provides reflective supervision to all of the consultants as well as their supervisors at their home site. Schema also facilitates the consultant and the administrative supervisor's orientation, as well as their ongoing professional development and the reflective supervision. From there, you see that we can partner. We are partnering with the Department of Mental Health um, and have infant and early childhood mental health consultants employed there at the DMH site. And their DMH supervisors provide administrative supervision and then again participate in our orientation, professional development, and reflective supervision. We also partner with other professional agencies and the way that looks different is that the um, professional agency contracts with Schema and for a certain number of consultation service hours. So we have a handful of consultants that are employed by Schema that would then provide the consultation to these professional agencies. The consultation services within your agency can include direct services with a child or a family or direct service with a program or within your agency if you are serving children and families within your agency. You'll see from there that the Department of Mental Health and the professional agencies then serve the children, um, the child care programs and other families and partners in their regions. <clears throat> How do you get more information? This is the contact slide that everybody's been waiting for as I'm talking about this. 
um, through a support from Blue Cross Blue Shield of South Carolina Foundation and the Preschool Development Grant from the South Carolina Department of Social, Social Services, SCIMA provides these consultation services free of charge. So any parent or child care agency can call the number listed here or start a referral online at skimma.org slash pair dash network. Um, again, all this information is on our website, so if you get lost today, just go there first. For individual child cases, though, the parent must consent before the consultant can become involved. Additionally, we offer telemental health consultation services, which allows any individuals caring for young children to connect with one of our peer network consultants for a brief consultation over the phone. Um, you would still call that same number up there, but please note we're not equipped to uh, offer emergency mental health services through the telemental health. Schema is now the organizational home for Help Me Grow South Carolina and the newly established Help Me Grow South Carolina State Office, which I'm sure Help Me Grow is not new to any of you here attending today. Um, but Help Me Grow works directly with families, child health providers, and early childhood partners to identify children with developmental and behavioral health problems and to provide referrals to community-based programs and services. It's available to all children, including those whose families might have concerns or they just simply want to more, learn more about their child's development. Jane Witowski is the Help Me Grow South Carolina State Director. <clears throat> With the um, creation of the state office, and I guess in 2020 is last year now, I guess, uh, <laughs> we Help Me Grow is looking to expand their services. And so currently they allow parents to complete an online ages and stages uh, questionnaire, and they're connected to a care coordinator in their region who develops an individualized resource map for them to follow. So thinking about expanding services statewide, we realized that we really needed to partner um, with local communities to really get these resource, resource banks um, up and running in local communities as well. So Help Me Grow just launched their Help Me Grow partner grant. They just had their, um, their first round of applications submitted. And out of that application round, two recipients will receive $10,000 to assist, assist in establishing enhancing and maintaining their own network of community partners that are providing child development services and resources to local families and their community members. So these two organizations will be the first members of the Help Me Grow statewide network and will work collaboratively with Help Me Grow to promote early developmental health. Um, the idea is they'll be the first but not the last. So organizations eligible for these network grants include any South Carolina community-based nonprofit that serves children birth to age five um, you must serve a single county, but multi-county service is preferred. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mary Ellen to talk about a few of our other initiatives. All right, thank you, Susan. It was fun for me to hear just everything all in one presentation because I've been involved with Schema since the, the beginning. So it really has um, grown and all of those uh, programs are super exciting. Um, my role, I, I do see children and families um, directly, zero to five, working with them directly, but I'm also involved with SCIMA, um, particularly relating to workforce development. So I'm just going to be telling you about um, some other programs we have. This is a picture of Shaniqua Scott, who's um, our training coordinator. And she has years of direct service experience with young children and their families. She worked with Head Start. She did some home um, visiting with prevent uh, child abuse. And so we're really excited to have um, Shaniqua with us. And she's part of two of the programs I'm gonna be talking about as the training coordinator. The first one is ABC um, and if any of you were attending the keynote you know, this morning, you probably heard Dr. Klass talk about how much we need to support parents. And you know, through all of this stress that we're all going through and even um, children who might have some of the ACEs factors in their lives despite ACEs, the most important thing is having a, having a connection and having the relationships. And this is, this is really what ABC um, is all about. So, even before the pandemic, we needed ABC, but but now you know we need it more than ever as a way to strengthen the connection and attachment between a young child, six to 24 months, and their 
um, caregiver. So this is a program that is 10 sessions in the home um, and it targets um, three really important behaviors of the parent that we know are related to attachment, nurturing, following the child's lead and avoiding um, frightening behavior. And the way this works is that the ABC parent coach um, is in the home with the parent and they're delivering some content, but the main part of the program is what we call in the moment commenting. It's almost like coaching. So it's a very positive model where we're um, helping the parents in just real life, real time with some in the moment commenting. So I'm going to um, let you see a brief video just telling you a little bit about ABC. It's about two and a half minutes long. And then I'll come back and um, give you some more information about ABC. It's hard to care for someone when you're stressed out and everything around you is broken and going wrong. I couldn't be the mother that they needed me to be. ABC is an intervention that targets parents of children that have experienced adversity. We see that parents not only change right following the intervention, but that these changes are sustained over time. This is easily the most effective intervention I have ever implemented or been part of. It is also nationally known as one of the most evidence-based interventions out there. We've seen at both the behavioral and biological level, which is pretty amazing. Good job! We think in the moment commenting is really the active ingredient of ABC. And I like yeah. how you're kind of letting her take control, right? You're letting her do it, right? Sometimes so as they it. are smiling at their child, we say, great job delighting in him. And then we tell them why that's important. So we say like, that's something that is really going to help his confidence, his self-esteem. This little tiny thing that you're doing right here in front of me, that is something that has a long-term impact. Oh, that's nice. She starts to cry. You think that's just what she needs. That is what, what's different about this intervention. We very specifically in the first two weeks don't say suggestions of what you should do differently. Don't point out what someone's doing wrong. We just tell you what you're doing right. And everyone's doing something right. Yay! The ABC program has enlightened me. So there's things that I really didn't understand and there's other ways of parenting children that are new to me. Like everything was new to me. So I think the parent coach's job is to kind of empower them and remind them that they're nurturing and following the lead and smiling and delighting in their child. Um, they know that those things are powerful. I like to take as an example a mom who lives in a motel room who has a horrible environment to live in. And yet, that mom can be sensitive and nurturing to her child, and that child's entire world changes as the result. And what we know is that having this interactive partner is key to brain development, behavioral development, and to developing a, a secure attachment. My daughter told me that I'm a nice mommy now, <laughs> which felt good and kind of stung at the same time, but it's like, you know what? I'm better, I'm better, and so are they. Okay, so that gave you a little bit of a feel for it. So ABC is um, an evidence-based uh, intervention and recognized by uh, multiple different uh, registries, endorsed by registries. And you saw Dr. Dozier on the, the film. She um, there is at the University of Delaware and has done years and years of research on attachment. And that research is what led her to develop this ABC intervention. And then from there, they've done many, many randomized control trials comparing 10 visits of ABC to 10 visits of a more traditional, um, you know, developmental education with some at risk families and shown all kinds of um, significant differences in the groups um, with the, the factors that they were talking about. And I'll tell you a little bit more of about those they had mentioned in the film, biological and attachment. So they're showing improvements in the attachment relationship, but also 
um, the stress hormone, they're showing differences in the stress hormone and children's verbal abilities. So, so lots of improvements in the control trials. And, they've, and then from there, they've done more research bringing ABC out into the communities. It's in many, many states and other countries. And they've shown that it, it's effective with this community dissemination research showing pre and post results. So, um, so we're really excited to have it in South Carolina. Go ahead with the next slide. So our first training in South Carolina was in the summer of 2019. And we now have five um, certified parent coaches for ABC. Of course, we were hit with the pandemic just as we were getting going, but we were um, able to switch to some tele-ABC and they've been doing research on tele-ABC and have shown that it is um, effective if we can't go into the home. This is not an intervention that is done in a clinician's office. So it, it's very important for it to be in the home. And then if needed, we can do it um, over video during this pandemic. We have another training coming up uh, soon in a couple of weeks and have a, a group. Um, it's really important to know you, you do not have to be a mental health professional to become an ABC parent coach. As a matter of fact, we are starting to look more at some of our home visiting programs and you know some of our providers who are already working with um, very young children and parents and training those folks to use ABC. A lot of other states are training some of their more traditional home visiting model providers in ABC. And you can think of it almost like a supplement because it's it's 10 sessions. So it's something that you could add on or, or you know provide for a family as something extra that they, if you feel that they have that that need. So we're excited about the next training that's coming up. Um, Shaniqua will be part of that training and um, some of her other colleagues from home visiting will be part of that as well. Um, as it says at the bottom, there is a brief screening with University of Delaware just to make sure it's a good fit. But um, I'm sure we will be having other training. So if anyone is interested in that, um, Dr. Warren, we do have one question here in the chat. Yes. Um, yes. We have someone asking, uh, do you offer the parents the training at no cost? Yes, there's no, now, oh, that's a great question. So if it is um, being provided by a mental health professional, then it's provided as a service, you know, just through insurance or Medicaid. Like for example, if I was providing that, I'm able to do it and bill for this as a service. but if it's provided by a program where a provider is already going into the home with um, some other work that they're doing or through a home visiting model, then it's just part of that program. So there is, there's no cost to the family. Um, that was a good question. Great, thank you. Um, the training is traditionally two days in person. This year um, in a couple of weeks we're going to do four half days of virtual training and then there's supervision for one year an hour of clinical supervision every week and a half an hour of what's called coding supervision which um, it's a little more technical but it's helping you learn those target behaviors and how to make those in the moment uh, comments that are such an integral part of, um, of this training all right we can go to the next slide. So another um, program that we're offering through Schema that Shanique was very involved with as the training coordinator is called the FAN, Facilitated Attuned Interaction. And I believe they just um, had a training in the FAN and there's another one. Um, it's not on the website yet, but possibly later in the summer we'll be having another training. But what's important to know about the FAN is it is not an intervention. So it's not like ABC where it's you know 10 sessions. This is more of um, a tool or an approach that can be used by um, many, many people working with families and parents. Also a great tool for supervisors. So um, it was developed through the Erickson Institute's Fussy Baby Network. Um, and it's very much thought of as a reflective 
practice that supports um, providers and also helps providers work with families and prevents burnout um, with home visitors. So I do know supervisors trained in the FAN, matter of fact, was on a recent call with one at a mental health center who said it's just made such a difference in her supervision. So again, it's, it's more of a tool or of an approach um, that helps you. And you can see a little graphic of the FAN in there. It kind of helps you meet the person you're talking to, whether it's a parent or a supervisee, kind of meet them where they are um, and help process their feelings and, and sort of guide the discussion in this really attuned and sensitive way. Okay. And that brings us to reflective supervision. You, you heard Susan mention reflective supervision a few times. It's Reflective supervision is thought to be a very, very important and integral part of the work we do with infants and young children, uh, which is why it's required by three of the four competencies. Um, and so we're really working in our state to try to build the capacity um, of reflective supervision. It, it, it's known to improve the quality of our services. Um, and important components of reflective supervision uh, that it's, of course, reflective, it's collaborative, and it's regular. Regularity is important. So it's something that you're doing on a regular basis every couple of weeks for an hour. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Uh, reflective supervision improves professional practice. Um, and the idea of parallel process is really important in reflective supervision. So as we are nurtured, we are able to nurture. So you can think of parallel process like pass it on or a ripple effect. So, you know, if the supervisor is able to be supportive and reflective with the supervisee, then they're able to do that with the parent and the parent's able to do that with the child. So it's really about having some caring conversations. Um, helping the supervisee to step back and, and be more aware and more reflective and think about their thoughts and their feelings about what they're observing with the parent and the child that they're that they're working with because our work is is very challenging so um having that reflective supervision it's it's very different from clinical supervision or administrative administrative supervision it's it's um, a thoughtful, reflective way to just take some time to think about your work uh, with families and all of the feelings that you might have about that. Next slide. So we, uh, through Schema, offer a reflective supervision learning collaborative. And again, this is about trying to build capacity in our um, state. So folks who want to get involved with a learning collaborative are going to have a lot of um, benefits, including learning all about reflective supervision, what it is, uh, receiving their own supervision, earning the 24 hours that is required for um, many of the endorsements, as well as just being able to connect, to connect with colleagues and peers through, um, through the groups. So this is another offering that we have at Schema. Okay, next slide. And this is our time to just um, hear what everybody, what everybody's thoughts are, what questions you might have that you might want to know more about from, from Susan and I. Great. Thank you both. Um, and a reminder to all of our attendees, if you have any questions, please um, type them into the chat box and I will pass those along to our panelists. I do see that we do have one attendee um, with their hand raised, Ayana Brown, if you could please um, just type, if you have a question, just feel free to type it into that chat box. Um, I will post that link uh, one more time. I see somebody asking. I just shared that link again. So um, hopefully you all received it. And if anybody needs it again, mm -hmm. um, keep track. Uh, this will all know. count towards endorsement if you decide to apply and want to put down some of your training. 
Um, so we have a follow up question on the question about training for parents. Um, we have an attendee asking, are parents available to participate in the trainings that professionals do? Hmm. I'm trying to, um, I guess I'm wondering which trainings they might be referring to some of the ones that Susan spoke about, or parents wouldn't be necessarily in an ABC training because that would be for providers and even the fan training um, is really, you know, for your work. So I'm trying to think, Susan, is there anything else you've spoke about that? They just confirmed they're inquiring about the ABC training. A parent could definitely be a recipient um, or have an ABC provider, a parent coach come into the home and provide ABC. Okay, they confirmed okay. that. I hope is that helpful. answers. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, it looks like it. <laughs> I see your comment, Beth, and I appreciate it. Yes, that is something I'm actively working on. I'm a very fast talker. <laughs> Any other questions or thoughts anyone would like to share? I know this is the end of a long day with Nurturing Developing Minds and I'm Glad you're all here. Yeah, lots, lots of Zoom time today. Yes, yes, yes. And Susan, Dr. Warren, anything else um, that you guys wanted to share in closing? Well, if any of you are parents of young children, like these folks, I've been, I was checking with them already. Just uh, be kind to yourself, take care of yourself. This is a very hard time for parents and, um, you know, just love to support all of you. So be well. Yeah, thank you all for being here and the work that you are doing. And again, just a reminder that we are big proponents of collaboration. So if you saw any type of collaboration opportunities within the initiatives we talked about today, um, please reach out to us. I see Cindy. Hi, Cindy. I'm looking for any names that I might know. Oh, we've got so many folks. Thank you all for coming. Well, I think hearing no further questions, um, maybe we should wrap up for the day. Oh. Um, I want to give a big thanks to our panelists um, and to all of our attendees for joining us today. Um, once again, if you're claiming um, South Carolina Endeavors credit, please make sure you've completed the Google form and I will share it here one more time. Um, and we will be providing a recording of this session to all attendees via email in the coming days. Um, again, a big thank you to our presenters and for all of the work that you do. Uh, thanks to all of our attendees for spending part of your day with us. Um, and I hope everybody has a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Alexis. Thanks so much. Thank you, Alexis. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Goodbye, everyone. Have a good weekend. <laughs> <laughs>